Hello and welcome to Open Logic. In this video, we're going to look at how DRAM manages data and the concept of a memory interleaving. This is a drill in line memory module DIM and that is used to store data. Let's say I have a picture, it is 8 pixels times 8 pixels. Altogether, there are 64 pixels and every pixel represents one byte of data. A pixel value ranges from 0 to 255. If a pixel value is 0, that means the pixel is in black, and if the pixel value is 255, then the pixel is in white. Now from a high level, we know that the data is being stored inside this memory module. But in order to understand where the data goes, we need to look at it from every technology perspective. Let's start with DDR4. DDR4 has 64 bits of data bus, that means we can send 8 bytes of data per cycle. So for this picture, which is 64 bytes of data, we can chop it up into 8 bytes chunk and send them one by one into the memory module. If this memory module is a DDR5 instead, it would only have a 32-bit data bus. To store the picture into the memory module, we need to chop the picture into 4 bytes chunks and send them one by one. At this point of time, we may ask how come DDR5 has less data bits compared to DDR4? Wouldn't that mean that DDR5 is slower than DDR4? Well, not really. One major reason to reduce pin numbers is to reduce cost, but DDR5 can operate at a higher frequency clock and therefore the data rate is still better than DDR4. In a similar manner, if this is LPDDR4 or LPDDR5, which means it has 16 bits of data bus, we will need to chop the picture into 2 bytes chunks and send them one by one. Now back to DDR4. We know that we need to send data in 8 bytes chunk, but we haven't seen it from a memory chip perspective. If we are using by 8 memory chips, there would be 8 of them and each one of them handle 1 byte of data. So an 8 byte chunk of data is further divided into 1 byte, and every byte is sent to its respective memory chip. Looking back at the picture, we know that now the picture is split into different pieces, and every piece is stored into different memory chip. For example, the memory chip here stores pixels 0, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, and 56. If we are using by 16 memory chip, there will be 4 of them for DDR4, and each one handles 2 bytes of data. As a result, the picture is split into 2 bytes chunk, and every chunk is sent to their respective memory chip in this manner. If we look at this memory chip, this would be the pixels it stores. We can also use by 4 memory chips, and that means there are 16 of them for DDR4. Every memory chip would handle 4 bits of data, that would be half a byte. So a pixel which is 1 byte of data is further divided into 2 4 bits, and every 4 bit chunk is sent to their respective memory chip. Now let's say there is a technology that can handle 8 bits of data per cycle, and the memory module only has one memory chip which is a by 8 memory chip. The reason we are creating this imaginary technology is so that we don't need to split the picture into multiple chunks and store them into different memory chips. This would help to visualize how memory chip works internally. Now let's say this memory chip has 8 banks and every bank has 8 rows and 8 columns. So generally, every bank has 64 address locations and altogether 8 banks has 512 address locations. And this is address 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth, and this is address 63. This will be all the addresses bank 0 can hold, and address 64 would start from bank 1. Using the same algorithm, we can map all the addresses in all the banks until the final address here, which is 511 at bank 7. This is a by 8 memory chip, that means every address location handles 1 byte of data. So altogether, this memory chip can handle 4K bits of data or 512 bytes of data. Now back to the picture. This picture has 64 pixels and every pixel is 1 byte of data. If we want to store this picture into the memory chip, how would it be stored? Intuitively, we think that the whole picture can be stored into bank 0. But this has a problem. Can you figure out what it might be?
To understand the problem, we have to see how data is stored into the memory chip step by step. We start by storing the first 8 pixels into the row 0 of bank 0. And for that, we need to activate row 0. For all the other banks, even though they are not selected, their row 0 is also activated because they are sharing the same decoding logic. Once the row is ready, data can be written onto it. And when the first 8 pixels are written to the first row, we can move on to the second row. But this involves closing the first row and then opening the second row, which takes a significant amount of time. As you can see, this operation will happen over and over again every time we move to a new row. Which generally means the bandwidth of which we are sending the data is not efficient. And the question is then, is there a way to make this any faster? And yes, there is, and it is called memory interleaving or bank interleaving. Let's see how it works. Now let's start all over again. The first 8 pixels are stored in the row 0 of bank 0, and that's the same as before. Now for the second 8 pixels, instead of storing in the row 1 of bank 0, we can actually store them into row 0 of bank 1 which is already open. And similarly for the next 8 pixels, we can store them into row 0 of bank 2. Now using this mechanism, we can spend less time on closing and opening rows. So as a result, the overall bandwidth is better. Looking back at the first mechanism to store the picture, we practically use the pixel ID as address. If we look at the address in its binary form, you can see that the address can be further divided into bank ID, row ID, and column ID. For example, pixel 0 is stored at bank 0, row 0, and column 0. And pixel number 8 is stored at bank 0, row 1, and column 0. And pixel number 63 is stored at the bank 0, row 7, and column 7. Now this mechanism is easy to understand but as we've seen before, it loses bandwidth closing and opening rows. Now let's look at the addressing of the second mechanism. The first 8 pixels are the same which are stored in the bank 0, row 0. Now for the second 8 pixels, they occupy column 0 to column 7 row 0 and bank 1. And using the same mechanism, you can map out the addressing of the next 8 pixels, which are stored at bank 2. And the last pixel, which is pixel number 63, is stored at bank 7, row 0, and column 7. Now if we look at the addresses, it's less intuitive. The first 8 pixels are the same, but the next 8 pixels, they are stored from address 64 to address 71. And the next 8 pixels are stored in address starting from 128. And the final pixel, pixel number 63, is stored at address 455. Now if we compare these two addressing mechanism, this one is more intuitive but is wasting bandwidth. And this one on the other hand is less intuitive but it's saving bandwidth. Now thankfully you don't have to choose between the two because the system will automatically handle it for you. If you pay attention, there is an algorithm to convert the address from the left to the address from the right. Quite simply, we can swap bank address with row address. Basically, every time we try to change to a new row, we change to a new bank instead. In a system, there would be a memory controller communicating with the memory module. Data in a system will be represented by addresses like this, which is known as logical address. When we want to store the data into the memory module, the memory controller will convert the address by swapping the row address and bank address. The addresses used by the memory module is known as physical address. In this way, we won't get confused by where are the addresses of a data, and the system would not waste too much time on closing and opening rows. Before we go, you have to understand that this is an overly simplified model of memory system. For example, there will be a lot more number of rows as compared to number of banks in the memory module. So you cannot swap bank address and row address as simple as shown in the illustration. Well, that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. I hope you find the video helpful. Do help supporting by clicking like, share, and subscribe.